Hi guys, welcome to our MP Lab Tutorials for Absolute Beginner series. This is another tutorial in the series of USB communication with a PIC microcontroller. We first started with a quick introduction to USB. In this video, we're gonna discuss the USB communication device class. We're gonna learn what is it and when or where can you use it in your application. We're gonna learn how to use microchip libraries for applications or MPLAB code configurator to add a USB to our application. If this is the first video you've watched on this channel, welcome to Student Companion Electronics. We provide embedded programming tutorials for absolute beginners on various hardware platforms like 8-bit, 16-bit or 32-bit PIC microcontrollers, AVR, ARM, Arduino, Raspberry Pi or ESP32. To learn more or download the source code used in our videos, check out the link to our website in the description of this video. If you have questions or suggestions for future tutorials, please let us know in the comments below or in the forum on our website. So, let us get started. Before going further, please consider watching the Getting Started with USB Communication tutorial first. You can get the link in the description of this video. The RS-232 serial interface port or COM port is now rarely found on a personal computer. This once common interface has been virtually replaced by the USB. Today, the USB has grown beyond PCs to become the common interface for many embedded industrial and consumer products like in cameras, GPS, printers and many more. This has created problems because many PC software were designed to communicate with the embedded applications using the RS-232 interface as the USART is still one of the simplest serial protocol to use with any microcontrol. Many devices are still using it as their main communication protocol like GSM or GPS modules. So if you need to communicate with a PC and you don't want to rewrite the PC software, then some sort of serial to USB converter is required. There are many types of USB communication classes. The functionality of a USB device is defined by class code. This is used to identify a device functionality and to nominally load a device driver based on that functionality, like communication class, HID, image, mass storage, and so on. The communication device class or CDC support a wide range of devices that can perform telecommunications and networking functions like analog phones and modems. A detailed description about CDC is provided by the USB Implementers Forum website. The USB communication device class, which has a base class of two, can be used to emulate the serial port and thus no software modification on the computer side as all existing PC software you had could still work with no problem, only the hardware will change as the USB CDC can be used to emulate the old serial port or if you need to create a PC software to interface with your hardware, it's very simple to develop a serial port interface. Uh, this is probably the simplest of all USB communication. We have already developed this PC software with a serial port in one of our tutorials to control a peak with the RS-232 serial interface. Later in this video, we're gonna use the same software, but now with USB, to show you the easiest way to upgrade your old RS-232 based application to USB or to design a simple USB to serial converter. USB is very different to other simpler peripherals like USART, I2C or SPI for example, where you could simply add the peripheral interface to your project with some few library code or accessing the registers by reading the datasheet. With the USB, it's really different. You really need to write your code off the USB framework like the same way you would do with a TCP IP framework. USB is an order of magnitude more complicated than the other peripherals. It must be constantly serviced to maintain a connection to a PC. Fortunately, Microchip provides different tools that you can use. You could use Microchip libraries for applications or MPLAB code configurator. This will really simplify the job for us. 
Let's start with a simple USB example. We're gonna start first with microchip libraries for applications. Then we're gonna do the same example using MPLAB code configurator. These are the minimum components that you're gonna need. We're gonna use the PIC 18A4550. We're gonna use an external 20 MHz crystal oscillator. You need to connect the USB port, the D+, the DERA+, to the PIC D+, in this case it's gonna be on RC5, and the D- minus to RC4, then we're gonna need the positive. We can even get power from the USB host, and this is a ground. Uh, the other thing we're gonna need, this is just a decoupling capacitor, a 100 nanofarad could be fine. We're gonna need also an external capacitor on the VUSB for the internal voltage regulator. Any value from 200 to 470 nanofarad could be fine. You can refer to the PICDEM FS USB development board user guide for your hardware design. These are the components they are using in this design. You can see they are also using the PIC 18A4550. VUSB they are using 470 nanofarad and the crystal oscillator 20 MHz. And basically, yeah, these are the other components. So we're not going to use all of them. This is a power supply section. Us, we're just going to make a very simple USB so that we can demonstrate the basic functionalities. If you will read the data sheet on the USB section, this is the internal USB peripheral. We've got some internal pull-ups resistors that we're going to use so that we don't have to use an external pull-up resistors. We're not also going to use an external 3.3 volt USB voltage regulator. We're going to use the internal one. So we're just going to need an external capacitor. You can go through the data sheet to understand everything. So basically, this is a simple external circuitry. Uh, it says the P184550 devices built-in pull-ups resistors de designed to meet the requirement for the low speed and full speed USB. Or you could also use external pull-up resistors if the internal resistors are not used with a capacitor connected to the VUSB. In our case, we're just going to use the internal pull-up resistor to save some few components. And the D plus and D minus, they will be connected to the USB host via the USB cable. It said the internal regulator, uh, these devices have a built-in 3.3 voltage regulator to provide power to the internal transceiver and to provide a source for the internal external pull-up resistors. An external 220 nanofarad plus minus 20 percent tolerance capacitor is required for stability. So this is the bit that can be enabled if you want to enable or to disable the internal regulator. We're going to see in code how that can be done. So let us see the microchip libraries for applications and how we can use these tools. So on microchip website under the tools and softwares, we've got this page microchip library for applications or you can simply go to Google and tap microchip libraries for applications. I think it's going to be faster. Microchip libraries for applications is a collection of microchip firmware libraries, drivers, demo project, documentation and utilities for different types of applications, including USB graphics, file input, output, smart card, TCP, IP, smartphone, and many more, as you can see. It supports various device architectures like PIC18F, PIC24, DSP, and PIC32MM. So in our case, we are interested in the USB. The current version is 2.18. Let's see when it was released. It was released in 2018. As you can see, they haven't been updating these libraries. I believe they want to port everything to MPLAB code configurator. The current version, the USB, it says it support only the 16-bit, the PIC24 and DSP, also the PIC32. But I don't think so because let's read the release note. You can download it for Windows, Linux or Mac depending on your operating system. So you can just click here to download your version depending on your operating system. Then you can install it before you can start using them because I've already downloaded and installed it. So I'm not going to download it again. Cancel. I'm interested in the release note. You can click here to download the release note. We've got also the help files. These are also very important. You must download them so that we can see how you can use these libraries. Okay, this is the release note. Let us open it. As you can see, the USB library support the PIC16F, the PIC18F, 
pick 24 ds pick 33 and pick 32 families so we, we can definitely use it for your pick 16f or your pick 18f in this case we're gonna use the pick 18f for the 550 so we have already downloaded it and installed the current version ml so this is the current version that we downloaded when you install it it's gonna create different folders we've got the app folder this contains the application examples we've got different examples that you could use we've got the usb the tcp ip the smartphone in our case we need the usb so we've got three folders we've got the device folder this folder has various demo examples to implement the usb device a usb device is basically the the usb is used as a slave and pc for example could be the host we've got various examples we've got the audio microphone the audio midi the bootloaders the cdz basic we're gonna use this example it's one of the simplest can also use the cdc serial emulator we've got the hid we've got the hid mouse so basically you've got all type of usb which are supported we've got also some some utilities that you might need like drivers and stuff a windows driver installer tool so if you want to install the driver especially for the usb cdc we're gonna need a driver so that it can be detected by the operating system uh, we've got also the factory demo so this folder contains pre-programmed demos in dot x file that are ready to run in microchip development board if you bought one of the microchip development board like the pick them fs usb you could just get this dot x file which are ready to run we've got also the folder we've got also the host folder so this folder has various demo example to implement the usb host applications got the cdc basic the hid keyboard the hid mouse and so on the simplest way to get started is to use one of these examples then modify them to suit your need you cannot just simply let's say you come to usb and you go to device and then because we said we're gonna use the cdc basic then you just go and copy one of these examples like the pick them fs usb this one using the pick 18f 4550 which is the pick that we are using so we could start with this example so you cannot just simply copy it to a different location because it won't work as it has dependencies with other files in other folders and sorting out to those paths would be really a nightmare so the the simplest ways is to use the option in mplab the package option which is gonna copy the, the, the whole directory to a different location so what we're gonna do uh, let us start open one of the project that we're gonna use as the sample microchip under the apps folder device cdc example firmware you can choose one of the examples that closely related to what you want to design especially if using the same pick you can go through the, the user guide of one of these dem demo board to see which picks they are using in our case we're gonna use one of the two this one using the pick 18f 45k50 we're gonna use this one which is pick 18f 4550 basically the same pick that we are using open project this is the example we opened we're gonna start running it and see if it's gonna build with no errors before we can do anything else great build successfully so let us package our application so that it's gonna create a zip file with all the required files and folder to run your application to run this application from different locations so we always gonna do it like this so that we don't have to modify the original files because we might need them so right click on your project the name of your project in mplab and select package it's gonna create the zip file with all the files that you need gonna create it in the same is the same folder as this project so you can just click here on this generated package so this is our file you can just cut it and put it in a different location in this way it's always gonna run because it's got all the file all the references and everything that I need to run this project great I'm gonna put it in paste extract files 
great so i'm gonna close this original example close and then i'm gonna open the one i've just copied to that location so that i'm free to, can modify the way i want i know i'm always safe okay so open the app folder usb the usb device cdz basic firmware and this is the demo project the pictem fs usb let us build it and see if it's gonna still build with no errors before we can start modifying it great still build successfully so we can start these are the different files uh, when you open them it can be a bit daunting because you've got a lot of files and what is important you can just leave all of those files as they are and add your application on this framework this is the main file we've got also some usb files we've got the usb descriptor device the device cdc uh, these have got some functions specific to the cdc class and these are the header files we can open these header files to get some few descriptions of how to use some of those functions like the cdc board rate for example they describe this is a micro used to set the board rate report it back to the host and so on so you can read some of these functions but i prefer to go through the documentation in microchip library for applications in microchip libraries for applications we've got also other folders we've got the doc folder okay we've got also the bs folder we've just described we've just described the app folder which contain the application demos so we've got bsp folder which contain the code supporting the microchip development board so if you are using one of microchip development board you can get the code from this folder we've got also the doc folder so this contain the documentation we've got the license files the release note and the midway specific help files so we've got the help ml usb so this is the file that you're gonna use the help file for the usb library okay i've got here the cdc function driver so yeah this is where we've got all the cdc functions so all those functions like all these functions to receive or to send a character through usb cdc so everything you're gonna need let's see where we can start yeah great so let's go to our mplab project we can see here if we open the main C, the first thing they are calling the system initializer. So basically for configuration bit and stuff. Because that is the one of the most important uh, when you are dealing with the USB project. The clock settings must be correctly set. Otherwise your USB device is not going to recog be recognized. Sometimes when you plug a USB on your PC and it says USB device malfunction or it's not recognized. Most of the times, not always, It mostly the problem is usually the clock settings. So these are the configuration bits. If we go to the data sheet, the oscillator configuration can see this peak it's got different oscillator types the xt the crystal the hs so different types of oscillator option this is the most important diagram as you can see we need a 4 megahertz input in this pll so that it can be raised to 96 megahertz so wherever we have if we are using the primary oscillator whatever it is we have to use this prescaler to scale it down so if we are using let's say 8 megahertz crystal then we have to divide it by 2 so that we can have 4 megahertz if we are using a 20 megahertz crystal oscillator in our case we'll have to divide it by 5 so that we can have a 4 megahertz input to this pll module in our case that's what they did they are using the 20 megahertz crystal they are dividing by 5 if we go to windows tag get configuration bit i usually prefer to do this so that you can generate your configuration bit it's super easy doing it with this built-in tool so you can see the first the pl prescaler they're dividing by five so if you're using let's say eight megahertz crystal input then you could divide it by two and so on so here we're going to divide by five and the system clock prescaler they are dividing it the primary oscillator is divided by two so the 96 megahertz is divided by two 
and the USB clock source comes from the 96 megahertz PLL divided by 2 so that we can get 48 megahertz to run the USB in full speed mode so they are dividing by 2 okay the oscillator selection bit they are using the HS oscillator with PLL what else is important uh, the power timer bit is disabled the USB voltage regulator is enabled we are enabling the internal USB voltage regulator the watchdog timer is disabled so you can go through this bit and see what you're gonna need and what you're not gonna do in your application okay so if you need to use this tool you can just click on generate code and it's gonna generate this code that you can paste in this file okay the other thing they are calling the USB device in it so if we search for this function in the help file you can see even in this simple example so after the void mail you call this function uh, where is it the USB device in it this function initialize the, de the device tag in its default state the USB module will be completely reset including all the internal variables registers and interrupt so this function must be called before any other USB device function can be called including the device task okay so there it's checked done uh, then we've got the next function which is USB device attach uh, let's see again uh, what does this function do it said this function indicate to the USB host that the device has been attached to the bus this function need to be called in order for the device to start to enumerate on the bus it should only be called when usb interrupt is defined and should only be called from the main loop context do not call this from within an interrupt handler so we're gonna use it because we are using our usb interrupt so we're gonna call it in a while one loop you can either use interrupt or polling method if using polling we have to call this function regularly so it says such as once every 1.8 millisecond or faster in this case we are using an interrupt mode so this one is not gonna matter for us and that's all then you just have to call your application you know your specific task first you have to call your system initialize the configuration bit and stuff the usb device initialize and you attach the usb so that you can start enumerate on the bus and then yes if you are defining it polling mode uh, then you have to call this function regularly that's why they are putting it in the while one loop and after that then you can call your function that does your user specific you know task in our case we're just gonna write something very simple when we send it to usb whatever terminal then it's gonna echo back and increase with one so that we can see that it's doing something so whenever we send then we're gonna receive back if we send a one we're gonna receive a two if we send a a we're gonna receive a b so it's just increment by one let's see how we can write our own code the first thing we have to check the device state if it's less than configured only we can start doing something so if the device isn't configured yet we can't really do anything since we don't have a host to talk to if the device is not in configured state then we return we go back to the while one loop and if the device is suspended basically the same thing then we need to return because if the device is suspended then we need to see if we need to issue a remote wake up in other case we shouldn't process any keyboard command since we aren't currently communicating to the host we return to the while one loop again to navigate declaration the configured state is 20 so these are the different usb state as written by the usb gate device uh, you can read the usb 2.0 specs document on table 9.4 it's gonna explain all this usb state you can just google this document usb 2.0 these are the different state the first thing if the usb is not attached then there's nothing to do device is not attached to the usb so other attributes are not significant so once the device is attached then we have to power on the device and after then they're gonna be the default state uh, the device is attached to the usb bus and has been reset but has not been assigned to a unique address so device respond at the default address after the default state then it's address state 
So the device now is attached to the USB bus, has been reset and has a unique device address because as we learned from the previous tutorial, the USB is an addressable bus. Each device on the bus should have its unique address so that the host can talk to it, but the device is not configured yet. The next state now, it's the device is configured. So now the device is attached to the USB. It's powered. It has been reset. It has a unique address and is configured and is not suspended. So the host may now use the function provided by the USB. So it's only in this state when we can start, you know, talking to the host. And if it was already configured, but now it's suspended, if it's powered and there's not seen bus activity for three milliseconds, it may also have a unique address and be configured for use. However, because the device is suspended, the host may not use the device function. These are the two things that we're going to check. We're going to check first if the device have been configured and the device is not suspended. So you can go through this document to understand all those enumeration and processes and everything. So we're not going to go through all those details. Unfortunately, that is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Here we're just going to describe, you know, the basics, how you to design your own application using the provided libraries. First, we're going to check if the USB device state is configured. If it's not configured, then we return. And if it's not suspended, because if it's suspended, we return again. And now you can start writing your own code to send your command to the USB host or to receive something. Whenever you finish, you must always call this function. The CDCTX service handle device to host transaction. So this function should be called once per main program loop after the device reaches the configured state. So failure to call this function periodically will prevent data from being sent to the USB host over the CDC serial data interface. So this is basically what we need for a typical USB communication. Under the main loop, we're going to need the USB device initialize. And in the while one loop, the USB device task, we said we're going to call it if only we configured in USB polling. But in our case, because we configured in USB interrupt, so this function is just going to be ignored. And we're going to check if the device is in state mode on and is not suspended. Then we can write our code. Whenever we write our code, we must always keep trying to send data to the PC as required using this function, the CDCTX service. I'm just going to comment out this function that they are using. So we're going to create our own function just to do something really, really simple. You can go through all those stuff is really important, like the device descriptor. You can go through this document. These are some really important stuff, like the vendor and the product ID. As we have said in the previous tutorial, USB protocol is not a free protocol. If you're going to manufacture your own USB product, then you have to buy this vendor ID and the product ID because each USB device must have a unique set of PID and VID code. So we're going to use this code, which is a microchip supplied code. But if you have to build your own USB device, then you'll have to buy your own code. You can buy it from the USB implementers forum website, the association that maintain this protocol. And whenever you change this code, then you'll have to change the driver as well, the supplied driver, because microchip supply their own driver, the .inf file, you'll have to change it. So whenever we connect our USB, you're going to see when it's detected by the operating system. So it's going to be detected the microchip technology in CDC RS232 emulation. This is where you can change the product string or the manufacturer string of your own custom device, for example. We've got also the device CDC, some function specific to the CDC class. This is the board rate, the one, the stop bit and stuff. This way you can configure them. Usually for, for a CDC example that we're going to use, not going to matter. But if you are designing, let's say, USB to serial bridge, you might need these settings as well. Okay, so the first thing, as we said, we're going to declare the buffer size, the input and the output. going to be a global variable. So we're going to declare the read buffer and the, the write buffer. We're going to create our own function. So let us create the function prototype user application. And then we can call this function in the while one loop following the same format. We're going to check first if the device is configured and we're going to check if the device is not suspended. Let me just copy and paste what I've already prepared. 
The first thing, make sure the CDC driver is ready for transmission. So this macro is used to check if the CDC class handle firmware is ready to send more data to the host. So basically that's what we do. We're going to check if it's true. Then just going to declare two variables. Copies a string of byte received through the USB CDC bulk out and point to the user specified location. It's a non-blocking function and this is syntax beyond sign T buffer and amount of data you are expecting. Then we're going to go through the loop and if we received the line feed or new line, we're just going to echo them directly. And if we receive something else, whether it's a one, two, three, four, then we're just going to add a one on, on it. So if we send a one, we should be able to send back a two. If we send a A, we should be able to echo back a B. And after that, we're just going to check if number of byte rate is greater than zero, then we send back whatever we received to the host. Yeah, so if you're going to write an array of data to the USB host, you can use this function and this is how you can use it, data and specify the length of the data. So you can use this function if you are sending data from the RAM in our case, but if you are sending the literals, you can use this function, the put RSUSB usart. So this is write a string of data to the USB. So let's say if you want to send hello world, then you can use the put RS, but if you're going to send something from the data, from the variable, that you can use the one without a R, the put S USB usart. And that's all guys. And after that, we're going to call this function to hand the device to host transaction. Let us build. Great, build successful. In this example, we're going to use Proteus simulation. Uh, currently Proteus support USB simulation to allow complete simulation of those microcontrollers having on board USB peripherals. It supports some few classes like the mesh storage device class, the human interface device class and the communication device class which is this CDC we are using in this example. And it only supports some few microcontrollers so you can go to their website to learn more how which microcontrollers are supported so it doesn't support all microcontrollers even if they are USB microcontrollers controllers and before you can use this you have to install first the USB drivers and basically you need to have the correct licenses to simulate a USB from their website resources I think is yes, under resources and download you're gonna come to this page uh, the Proteus VSM USB driver so you have to download this these drivers are needed for Proteus USB transaction analyzer we, so in our case we have already installed them Edit properties with the USB host computer, it's a local host, so you can basically leave all this default. Uh, what you need to do is just to select your hex file. Let's run. So, if you haven't installed the USB drivers, you can find them. I'm gonna show you in the microchip libraries. Yeah, so this is a USB analyzer. You can basically analyze each packet that is sent through USB. You can see we've got the port, COM port, which is a virtual port. Generally, the USB port is the COM5 in this case. And if you go to properties, it's a microchip technology. That is the manufacturer string that we saw in MPLAB X. The device, it's called the CDC RS232 and say the device is working properly and if you, your device is not detected uh, let's go to MPLAB not MPLAB microchip library for applications the app folder the USB device uh, the CDC basic now under the utility file folder We've got the .in file. You can install these drivers so that your device can be detected on your computer. Basically, you're going to see this port is it's yellow. Then you can just right click update drivers and you go uh, search. You can browse for your computer. You can go, you can select this folder and you can click next. Then it's going to install the drivers automatically. So let us test. I'm going to open TerraTem. You can use any terminal application that you like. Select Serial. 
and is port 5 okay great so I'm gonna send some few packet gonna send a one okay let me just open the virtual keyboard so that you can see what I'm doing uh, keyboard so if I send a one I'm gonna receive a two because that's how we, we wrote our code if I send a two I'm gonna receive a three if I send a a I'm gonna receive a B and so on so I'm sending and I'm receiving and you can see each package is also updated on the packet analyzer you can basically monitor everything you are sending with this USB analyzer basically that's all guys for this example you have seen how you can create a simple usb communication device class you just need to make sure that your device is configured your device is not suspended and then you can write your own custom code as we've, we've seen in this example you just have to make sure that you call this function periodically so that it can handle the device to host transaction that's all guys for this tutorial thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials in the future. And in the next video, we're going to do the same example, but using MPLAB code configurator. We're going to use a different peak. We're going to also use the hardware instead of simulation so that we can see it's basically the same thing, how you can use the hardware as well. So thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Click on that bell button so that you can be notified whenever we upload new tutorials. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.